Singapore is a melting pot for all the cultures of Southeast Asia, and when they get together, they make great food. I'm looking forward to sharing some of that with you. I'm Thomas Robson, and this is Entree to Asia. It's a hot but historic evening tonight in Singapore. We're here at Raffles Hotel. Tonight, the location of the first step in a historic World Gourmet Safari. We're off tonight to four locations. At each one, a master chef with a worldwide reputation will prepare us a different course in a meal that'll take us through the finest hotels in the city. The dish we had tonight was a tataki of tuna served on a celery egg salad with a roquette and a little bit of caviar mayonnaise, uh, which is um, very much a blend of uh, Eastern and Western techniques, if you like. Uh, I mean, we take the pickled cucumber underneath on the first layer, which is, is very Eastern. Uh, the celery egg salad is bound with mayonnaise, which is very European. And the tataki of tuna is very Japanese. It's a typical Japanese preparation of tuna. Um, and then we add in the caviar with the saltiness just to cut through the richness of the tuna. So it's a, a real combination of, uh, of different styles. In, in, in the... Singapore is both a country and a city. And while it's not that big, my friends and I still had to get from point A to point B. Although our transportation for the evening was far from commonplace, it did provide its own fair share of comic relief. Well, here we go. We're on to stop number two now. Let's check the menu, I'm shall we? Him. I'm with him. Yoshihiro Murata. Tonight he will prepare for us shizakana, deep-fried lobster with rice cake served with egg sauce, eggplant, and chancho leaves. Now, I can't wait. The last dish, the combination with the wine, the world was spinning. Company's stellar, everything's fantastic. Let's keep on going. I was sure the food and wine was going to be fantastic, but I was intrigued about having dinner with 40 other gourmets. I wasn't disappointed. There were no cameras permitted at first, but when the organizers discovered what we were up to, they graciously allowed us to capture some of the wonderful sights and sounds, even if it meant shooting by candlelight at times. Well, this dish is just fantastic. Peter, what would you say that the, the lobster has been coated in before uh, before the frying? Any suggestions? Um, to me, it looks pretty much like a very thin coating of flour, mm -hmm. um, starch. It's got that nice juice. It makes me think rice. The rest, I would have to guess a little bit. Exactly. Because quite honestly, that recipe hasn't been shared with me just yet. Yeah. Yeah. Right. We have to keep in mind that Murata-san, who has prepared the meal, his style is his own signature. He's recognized worldwide. And uh, to eat his food is an honor, first and foremost. And to try and figure it out is one of these elaborate puzzles that gastronomes probably are satisfied and tortured by all at the same time. So here we are at the Ritz Carlton Millennia, our third stop on the Gourmet Safari. It's amazing so far. Right now, we're going to sit down to a rack of grilled lamb with a chutney prepared by Susur Lee, a Hong Kong-born chef who actually has spent most of his time professionally in Canada. He's known all across Canada, primarily in Toronto, and here he is in Singapore now preparing for us a lamb dish. Let me give you the details. Marinated rack of lamb with chili mint chutney, carrot and cardamom chutney on the side. The flavor to me is, is it's almost got a slightly Malay reminiscence to it. But then you get into the chutney, in particular here, I'll put this right on the piece of meat here, the carrot chutney. It's fresh, it's mildly acidic, it's not too sweet, which is really the challenge there. Combine it with this pancake of carefully fried rice noodle, and uh, I'm, I mean, I'm left speechless. This is truly an amazing, an amazing experience. The dish uh, I have been preparing on the menu uh, in this uh, very beautiful hotel is almost uh, uh, an idea of Singapore. It there is it. Thai, there is Singapore, there is, you know, there is marinated curry. So it's sort of a mix of uh, different parts of Asia. 
and put it in one plate, and that's what I'm achieving with, with my cooking. It certainly happened. Sifu, Sai. Here we are at the Oriental Hotel. The safari is almost over, and it's almost hard to believe we've been through three courses already. Fortunately, we have dessert yet to go. We have a Thai chef, Vichit Mukura, who is going to come and prepare this dessert for us. Mango Charlotte with caramel ice cream and cold coconut sabayon. I've had a taste of everything on the plate so far. And what I regret to say is, the smallest part of the decoration so far has the most intense flavor. Right here, it's rising. a little coconut sabayon with just a dot of raspberry coulis on the top. The minute it enters your mouth, it fills your mouth. Your sinuses, your entire tasting system is overwhelmed by something so small and tiny. The mango charlotte, amazing. The cold, uh, the cold little ice cream experience here with the caramel, totally satisfying. But the three little dots that were here, that's what I'll remember. <laughs> the gourmet safari was a great way to taste some amazing food. But the chef you're about to meet made me realize that the concept of a creative kitchen wasn't just the domain of an annual food festival. Welcome to Ahoy's Kitchen. We're here today with Chef To, our Good master morning. chef. Good morning, sir. Sir, welcome to Treasures. Ahoy's Kitchen is all about local food with a local taste. It's not a fancy cuisine. It's sort of a cuisine based on hawker styles. Is that it's, right? It's a Singaporean zi cha. The word zi cha means stir fry. The stir fry. Stir fry cuisine, yeah. Fantastic. Everything must be served quick, right out of the walk, very hot, very fresh. No time to play with garnishes. The customer receives the dish and the aroma is astounding. Yes. The secret behind that aroma really here is a Singapore style wok. And it's not so much the actual pan we're talking about as the way it sits on its burner. Can you see here the way the edge is cut out, scalloped on both sides? That allows the flame to draw its oxygen from above. In a traditional Cantonese kitchen, this area here is perfectly round and the wok sits and seals in. The air is drawn from below. This affects the intensity of the heat and in fact, this is not as fierce a cooking as in the Cantonese kitchen. Yeah. Allows more time for careful work. Yeah. You said today you're going to make char gui tiao? Yeah, the black pepper gui tiao. Black pepper gui tiao. It's one of our signature dish in Ahoy's kitchen. Yeah. Fantastic. Guitio is almost a universal term throughout Southeast Asia describing rice noodles. Today we're using a fairly thick rice noodle, but you can find other varieties of guitio that are thin like linguine. Fantastic noodle to work with. Please, chef, let's jump in. In goes the char guitio. At this point, you just get it hot so it's, it's ready to serve. Garlic. Garlic. Seafood. Now that's shrimp and uh, squid, right? Yeah. Sotong and uh, fish. Fish. Ah, fish, okay. Onion. Just the onion for now. Okay. So that way both are hot again at the right time. Bean sprouts. Cool. Very 
very hot, but very good smell. Now the fire again. Well, we need some seasoning. Seasonings now? Yeah. Go some. This is the black soya sauce. And here we go. And I used to use wok for the other side. And the black pepper sauce? Yeah. The black soy? Yeah. And also light soya sauce. And Lighter sesame soy. oil. Sesame oil? Yeah. Okay. Heat back on now. And now the most important is the black pepper. The black pepper to give that classic flavor. Now I... You cannot eat, you cannot eat the pepper for too early. Otherwise it will burn. So to keep the pepper from going bitter and burn, the last minute. But that must make the aroma stronger too. Yeah. Oh yeah. Black pepper guitio, a signature dish from Chef To. It looks fantastic. The smell of the black pepper is really, really fragrant. So now for the taste test, the important moment. You make this, you could be a star in your own home. It's amazing. The delicious flavors, the texture, the aroma, amazing. The black pepper, just where it belongs. Well, it was great to see Chef Toe prepare that typically Singaporean noodle dish. But it's nice to know as well that there are lots of different kinds of noodle dishes prepared by hawkers right out in the street in Singapore. So many varieties from so many different cultures. I thought we'd have a look at how to work with stir-fry noodles and make different kinds of dishes just by using one technique. The variety of noodles is pretty large. Now here's a couple in front of me just to get you started. Here are some fine rice noodles in a package and they're thin like fine hair. All you need to do with these is dip them into boiling water and then catch this, turn the heat off. When they go soft, strain them out, rinse them with some cold water, let them drain, they're ready to use, okay? So it's very simple, just like boiling spaghetti or other pasta, but turn off the heat and pay attention because they'll cook very quickly. But they are a delicious noodle. Perhaps one of my favorite noodles is the Shanghai noodle. The Shanghai noodle is a lovely egg noodle and it's already cooked and ready to use. All you do is open the package and start stir frying with it. And in fact, that's one of the main reasons that the Shanghai noodle is produced for simple stir fry dishes. Another kind of noodle that's popular in Hawaii is the rice pasta. There they call it long rice. And it's just like spaghetti in shape and length, but it's made with rice and it has a great little chewy texture to it and it's a lot of fun with chopsticks because it's a challenge to eat. It gets kind of slippery. Another easy one to use, another one that just you open it up right from the fridge section and put it into your stir fry dish. No advanced preparation required. And the one that I'm going to use today is the broad rice noodle for stir frying and this is the same noodle that Chef To used when he did his black pepper guitio or black pepper rice noodle. Now this is associated with Cantonese cooking or at least a Cantonese influence in whatever cuisine we're dealing with. And it's a lovely fresh noodle with a nice texture to it. When you buy it fresh, again, you'd use it just like the Shanghai noodle or the, the long rice or the rice pasta as I call it. Simply open the package and start your stir frying. If you buy it dried, however, well again, soak it a little bit, dip it into some boiling water until it becomes soft, get it out, rinse it and let it dry well it'll be ready to work with. This is becoming so popular, however, that it's becoming quite easy to find the fresh rice noodle like this to stir fry. So different kinds of noodles, different kinds of dishes, but how will we give them a different taste? Well, there's some options. Right off the bat, there's some ready-made seasoning pastes that are available, 
and they cover many different regions and so on. I look for a seasoning paste that has been prepared without MSG or preservatives and ideally that has been simmered with some oil in order to trap the essential flavors so that our dish will taste fresh and it will taste the way it ought to. All right, in front of me I have a couple of such pastes. Here's one that is very typically Singaporean and it's got a lovely yellow flavor from a bit of curry in the, in the, the paste and uh, it creates a very delicious noodle, one that you can call Singapore noodle. In front of me here now, this one in the middle, this is an Indonesian seasoning paste and it's got great flavors of roasted chilies and garlic and a little bit of shrimp paste. It's incredibly fragrant and delicious. That's just two to give you an idea that you can have quite a variety in these seasoning pastes. Now if you don't find a seasoning paste or if you want to do something from scratch, well one of my favorites is simplicity itself. Some uh, diced up red chili, some hot chili and some chopped up garlic and we're going to pound that together to make our own seasoning paste with a pinch of coarse salt. I'll just grab some from over here. A scant half teaspoon of coarse salt is more than enough. The coarse salt will help combine everything and break up those tough fibers. I know I repeat that a lot on this show, but it's an important thing to remember. And it helps give your seasoning paste the right taste as well. So quickly we'll pound this together. When you're pounding your seasoning paste, you might find that you're attracting the neighbors. Sure, some of them might say, stop that racket. But after a while, the majority will be say, oh, you're cooking something good again, eh? I got a bottle of wine. That's the least you should get in return for your hard effort. Okay, all that's required is a coarse paste, so that's very quickly done. And we'll put it aside and we'll get ready to do some stir frying. And let's remember that when you're stir frying, it's important to be organized ahead of time above all. So we'll get to ourselves, we'll get ourselves rather to that point. Rescue our seasoning paste. I've only got about a tablespoon here and, and that's enough for a seasoning paste like this. If you find you want more, by all means, use more garlic, use more chilies, or add any other aromatic ingredients you might want to. Onion, lemongrass, you name it, it's all out there. So here's our seasoning paste ready to go. Hey, here's a great idea. You can mix and match as well. Let's take some Indonesian seasoning paste and add that in just to give it a nice cultural mix, such as happens when two families join together, one Malay, one Indonesian, all of a sudden new flavors happen in the kitchen. It's traditional. Everyone's heard of the Orient Express, I suppose, that old and elegant train that travels through the heart of Europe. Well, this train is the Eastern and Oriental Express, or the E&O as it's called. It follows the same traditions as its European cousin with equal attention to detail and all the luxuries you would expect from first-class travel. It also has a top-notch chef and great food, a movable feast I am dying to experience. Traveling by train is still a major form of transportation in Southeast Asia. It's still the preferred way to navigate the long distances and jungles that dominate the landscape here. They'll take you anywhere you want to go. Today, it's Singapore through Malaysia and into Thailand. What a happy coincidence. That's exactly where I want to go. Okay, so the last thing we need to get organized is, well, what sort of garnish, that is to say, what other ingredients are gonna be mixed in with the noodles. Today I've decided to keep the dish meatless, okay? So we're going to use some vegetables. I'll move this bowl out of the way so you can see what I have here. So I have some sweet red onion, I have some sliced uh, carrot, and I really shouldn't say sliced because these are more like julienne. There's also a whole palette of different colors of sweet peppers, and that'll make a lovely colorful dish. Uh, whatever you put in, it's up to you. Just keep in mind when you cut it, Keep it sort of similar to the shape of the noodle, that is long and thin as much as possible. It mixes with the noodles much better at that point. If you want to add meats, well, ground meats will work fine, any kind. Uh, leftover cooked meats or barbecue pork, those will all be fine. Just cut them thin and long, they'll mix in great. A Little bit of bean sprout will go in at the end, but only at the end to keep them fresh and crunchy and nutritious. Over here, we're ready to do some stir frying, so jump into the wok. First thing to do here 
is to preheat the wok. Now that's important, and we've got that happening, and it only takes a moment. If you want to use a large cast iron frying pan, we'll feel free. A non-stick skillet will do just as well. And we'll throw in some oil. Get the oil hot, coat the pan. The next ingredient now is our seasoning paste. And remember today we took a simple paste, garlic and chilies. And to represent the fact that we could be part of a multicultural family, I added in some Indonesian seasoning paste as well. Regulate your heat, work carefully when you stir fry over gas. There we go, the oil has captured the flavor of our seasoning paste. Next thing is the vegetables. And if you were using some cooked meats, well, the next thing, or at the same time rather, you would add those in with the vegetables. If you had a little bit of raw meat or some shrimp or other seafood you wanted to use, we'll put those in with the seasoning paste before the vegetables and make sure that they're at least half cooked at that point. Let's be fancy with the wok here. Mixing things up a bit. Bump up the heat just a notch. Get things sizzling again. And let's add in a splash of Chinese wine. This could also be dry sherry, whiskey, anything that appeals to you. A little bit of fish sauce, about two tablespoons. I'm gonna hold some back. That's beautiful. Now it's time for the noodles. I'm keeping the heat pretty high. And when you add the noodles, also add a little splash of oil. Today I'm using peanut oil. That's my personal preference. You can use any kind of oil at all that appeals to you, perhaps with the exception of olive oil. I do a little bit of tossing. You can do a little bit of folding with your spatula or if you work with a wok spoon like this, it's fun and it's also kind of a, a hawker street side approach to cooking with the big spoon. It's kind of funky. Simply mix this around to get the noodles hot. You'll notice they change their texture very, very quickly. And if you see them start to scorch or stick to the wok, well, you can scrape a bit up. You could also say, hey, that's too hot. Bring the heat down just a notch. So while these are heating through, let's add, oh, about two teaspoons full of the fish sauce. I just held some back, that's all. And there we go. This is to make sure the noodles themselves are sufficiently salty and well seasoned. And now a final ingredient. I have some thick, dark, and sweet Southeast Asian soy sauce. The Indonesians make a version, they call it ketchup manis. And there's also a Malay version, and they're both deliciously strong and aromatic. And as you'll see in a minute, they lend a color that is unbelievable to the dish. Not to mention a superior aroma. And that's all there is to it. I can't believe it, simple. Now here we go, we're gonna serve it up. What a lovely contrast this platter is going to make. And there we have a fantastic dish of stir-fried noodles. Let's just give the plate a little shake. There, center it out a little bit more. Sometimes there's a bit of noodle that's not burned, but stuck to the bottom of the wok. Believe it or not, that has an amazing flavor. Don't be shy to do like the street hawkers do. Give the pan a little scrape, and make sure that those last crunchy bits get on top, because personally, the smart people look for them and eat them first, they're so delicious. Let's put some color on this dish, and it'll be ready to serve. I rely a lot on a garnish made of green onion, coriander leaves, and sliced red chilies. This guarantees us a really genuine Southeast Asian, uh, how do you say it now, a palette of flavors, or a, a scope of flavors. In any case, the idea behind this is to give that authentic Southeast Asian taste and the important sort of fresh zip that is required for making these dishes showstoppers and making you famous in your own home. So there we have it, stir-fried rice noodles, hawker style, and you don't have to worry about where it comes from. As long as it's your own kitchen, you're on the right track.
I've had a lot of fun moving about Singapore and tasting all the different regional flavors that come together in that great city. But it's been even more fun sharing all these great tastes with you. More tastes to come on Entree to Asia. I'm Thomas Robson. To find out more about Entree to Asia, including recipes and program descriptions, visit our website at www.entretoasia.com.